rolling my sleeves up, Milo. Because Re we're going to... Ready to get rolling? <laughs> yes, because I'm ready to get rolling. We're going to make little kittens, fuzzy kittens. I'm very excited to share this project with everyone. Um, we have a supply pack to go with these kittens. It makes two kittens. You can do a tuxedo cat, a black cat, a white cat, or a smoky Siamese cat. And it's totally, uh, I'm gonna call it a level two. That, it's, I don't even know what to say. They're very cute, <laughs> possibly rivaling me. Possibly, that's, possibly. That's a little bit of a problem. They, but... are as, they are as furry, that's for sure. So level two project, meaning you are familiar with the tools and the terminology. You've done some needle felting, but this is sort of the next step in very simple armature and kind of actually a simple project in terms of shapes and time, but with really fun results that I'm excited to show you how, how to do this. I have some tools that are going to be needed just because we are going to follow specific steps using these tools and putting applying the fur. Um, so I have a Zuli tool and a face ace. You could also use a skewer or a pindle if you have one of our pindles. And if you don't have the Zuli tool, um, you can follow along with something smooth and about the size of this handle, like a wooden spoon handle or something like that. And I'm going to be using a punch tool and a pen tool or a multi-needle tool and definitely have a 36 gauge needle on hand. I'm gonna just be using a single one. And the reverse needles are really helpful for this project, for blending and furring and making the transition from the shapes of the face to the furry, the whole furry body, basically. Of course, I have my felting surface and my, my regular needles and a ruler. And then we, we do also use, I will be using a set of hair cutting scissors. I like them because they're super sharp, they're made for this, and I also have the thinning shears, and that helps, just helps you get a more realistic look without chopped edges, as if you were, you know, cutting your own hair. <laughs> Go at it with the thinning shears, not the regular scissors. Are you recommending people cut their own <laughs> hair? Not recommending it, but I know we all do it. Um, and then this is on, on Serafina Fiber Art, there's a page called Goods and Faves. And we have a lot of the things that we use and like that we don't sell are linked on there so that you can find them easily. Also on there is this <laughs> kitten photo book, which I am using for my references. It's just spot on for this project. Um, super adorable and you will see when we, when we go overhead. So tools supply pack milo uh, i'm probably gonna nap but yeah. sure sure you do your thing <laughs> kyla will help me i have to channel the sleepy kitten part yeah you could go to sleep we'll, we'll be okay without you uh that this project though it's it, it's perfect it is perfect you're the <laughs> perfect teacher for it too good because i'm here to do it let's get to it yep okay all right, I have my supply pack here. I'm going to show you what's in here. I have to say, I was a little skeptical if I could, Talbot suggested a kitten project. I was you like, know? I don't know if I could pull that off, but I have had so much fun making these, I kind of don't want to stop, which is what happens when we, when we get into something good. Um. I feel like the more you make, the more you, well, the more you're realizing what you can do with them. Right. But then you want to keep making different positions and yes. eyes open, eyes closed, yes. sitting, laying. Definitely. So I'm going to show you what's in the supply pack and how to organize it. We have two wires. It's very simple. Each kitten gets a, gets a wire. And then for each kitten, we have charcoal and off-white chunky core. These core wools are 
can vary in width. So as we go through the project, you'll see in the instructions, I'm going to talk about taking eight inches and splitting it into quarters. And that might vary a little bit. You might end up needing a little more wool, a little less wool, but um, we're gonna do our best with, with measurements. And then I suggest keeping your black and white alpaca just go ahead and separate them in space because they very quickly um, sort of get pollute each other and get fibers all over each other. So today I'm going to make the lighter kitten. I'm going to make a little smoky kitten. And I have a few samples sort of halfway and three quarters of the way finished to show you what the possibilities are and what they, what they both look like. And then you have a bundle with your bunny bear and Serafina white. These are both house carded fiber and they're the perfect color and texture for this project and for what we're doing. And they get used in both, a um, little bit more of the white in the white cat. Oh, sorry. You also have a little bit of gray alpaca, which is for the smoky white cat. That bunny bear looks like, it's it, like would a seal make, point. it would make 10 cats. Well, we use it for all the little paws, the nose, and then across the belly. So you just want to make, yeah, just, it is, it is plenty. It's good. It is yeah. plenty. It seems like. And this bundle has two merinos. These are eye colors. I actually, on this kitten, let me see if I can show. I actually mixed the two together <laughs> to get like this kind of, I want to see, little like gray color. Orange and blue make gray. And then uh, we have black core. This gets used on both. Obviously a little bit more on the black kitten, but this is for eyeballs as well. So, and then the gray is our blender on the seal point kitten. Okay, the kittens can be laying down <laughs> or like all kind of curled up, eyes closed, or sitting, sitting. And all that is, is how you put the feet on and a few of the body shapes, super simple, just two shapes. So I'm gonna show, um, what did it, yesterday I was building the sitting, sitting seal point, sitting seal point, that's a good one. Should I do that again? I think okay. that's a good one. All right. So I started this one yesterday and she is sitting, but I did make a little open paw, which is fun. I'll show you how to do that. And her face is a little more finished than I usually do before she has her fur on, but she just doesn't have her fur on yet. And then this little guy is going to be sleeping on his back so he's more curled up and he has some feet ready to go over here so we'll be referring to those here and there but the first thing we need to do is make a poofy tail and this is using the plumage technique if you have any experience with it great if you don't i'm going to go over that right now and it's not it is not difficult it's a little time consuming but it's not difficult for the seal point, I like to use the gray on the tip and then switch to white. So I'm gonna use the white wire for this kitten. I can put the black one aside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and prepare some of my fiber because I need to pull it and I'm also gonna cut it in half. This alpaca, this baby alpaca, it has like a four to six inch staple length. And if we cut it in half, then we get twice as much distance coverage from it because if we use the whole thing, we end up cutting a lot off. You do not need this to be a super poofy kitten at this scale. So let me push this out of the way for a second. And I'm gonna pull a few swaths of my gray and I just grab the tips so that when I pull it, and this hand is little, about eight inches back, 
so that when I pull it, I know I'm just getting one staple length of fiber. And then I'm gonna cut it in half. And this should be enough for my tail tip. And I'll do like two piles like that of the white for the rest of the tail. This is a good time for you to tell me something about about kittens. Well, that I, was, I don't know. I was looking for things about tails, but oh, no, there's not really a lot of cat tail information, except for the weird Chinese proverb. Oh, let's hear it. <laughs> I gave an order to a cat, and the cat gave it to its tail. What is that? <laughs> um, I gave an order to a cat, and the cat gave it to its tail. I think that's just how they show their annoyance with their our petty requests. <laughs> Actually, that was the first, that very uh, thing was the first time I heard the vocabulary word perturbed. Per, yeah, perturbed. I remember a friend, a little cat was swishing the end of its tail and she said he's perturbed. It's like, what does that mean? It should be spelled P-U-R-R. -R. Is it P-E-R? I think it's P-E-R. <laughs> I probably, if I were trying to write it, would spell it P-U-R. P-U-R-R. -R. Okay, to start our tail, we're gonna find the center of our wire, our white wire, and pinch it rather tight. Just go ahead and pinch it closed. You might actually want pliers for this because the first couple of uh, wraps are hard to get tight. So we've got it pinched really tight, very tightly, and we're gonna take a little section of gray it's about a quarter of an inch if you squish it, half an inch on the floofy side. So slightly, what do we, slightly more than a wisp. And put it into the fold, the center it in the fold, and as tightly as you can. Instead of thinking of twisting first, just think of getting the wires crossed basically like you want them completely as tightly as possible overlapped then you can give it a little twist this is the plumage technique we make feathers this way this is a little bit more fiber than you would put into a feather because we want the tail to be nice and fluffy so i try to orient the second one at 90 degrees to the first one so that means it's about a twist and a half. <laughs> You'll get a feel for it. And then if you need to, you can hold this with pliers so that you can get it very tight. And I'm gonna do about five of these gray ones. Make sure that you're always twisting in the same direction. I'm twisting away from myself. Here's a Chinese proverb that makes more sense okay. to me. When rats infest the palace, a lame cat is better than the swiftest horse. <laughs> Unless you're trying to try get away. I guess this is true. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's good. Everything has its purpose. Right? Always yes. the right tool for the job. Yes. All right, I'm going to switch to white now. So what's the nine lives thing all about? I don't know, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> Completely. I, I, we had a cat. I might have told this story on the other cat video <laughs> because it is pretty remarkable. And um, sorry, patients, for throwing you under the bus. <laughs> But she backed over it in the morning <laughs> on the way to work. Unknowingly. Totally unknowingly. Our cats... With the car. The, yes. Ran it over. Yes. Our cats on the farm were probably inbred, maybe. 
super docile, like extremely so <laughs> made you wonder. And they, I don't know, they didn't have a lot of <laughs> defense mechanisms <laughs> or, or get up and go. So I don't know how this happened, but the cat didn't move. So I think she, we might've had a vet that came to the farm at that point or it saw the vet and the vet said, there's not much you can do. So the kitty was visibly <laughs> squished. <laughs> and it's the not vet funny. Said, Sorry. It not. is. Even the vet said, there's not much you can do, but it's going to be fine. <laughs> we were like, no. <laughs> what? It's this can't be. be. She had a little like crest coming out of her eyes and nose. And she was. She was totally wow. fine. I had another cat. Myrtle the turtle was her name, little tortoise kitten that was gone for three days, came back wrecked. Like she got attacked okay. by something. Her, was this more this recent? Is, this Would is getting a little bit gross. No, been this been was on the farm long, oh, also okay. a long time ago. And patients bathed her in, um, I don't know if it was iodine or something. Okay. Like, and it was... I'm not going to go into detail on our fuzzy kitten video, but it was bad. <laughs> and she completely recovered. Wow. They're, they're just amazing. This English proverb, a cat has nine lives. For three, he plays. For three, he strays. And for the last three, he stays. Oh, it's getting wise. <laughs> I don't know where getting backed over by a car fits in those. I don't. Plays, strays, or stays. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that falls into the strays oh. portion. They have, I don't know, maybe their bones are soft or they have just her miraculous healing powers or something. I don't know. Plus, they can survive things that other animals wouldn't, you know, falls and yeah. cars and such. So I'm going until I have about half my wire. This is a an 18 inch wire and we folded it in half. So that would be about four and a half inches, half of that. I'm gonna do one more. If my fiber is wispy on one end and cut on the other, I like to restack it so that it has a little more natural, even though I'm about to cut it all together, but just helps it be a little more natural. So yeah, this is about a little over um, four inches left. So I'm gonna go ahead and twist this together. You don't have to twist it this part very tightly, um, just enough to bring the two wires together. And then usually one end is a little longer than the other. But I just like to fold that over so that I don't have a pointy end. Before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and give this a trim. It's just easier to, <laughs> it's easier to do at this point. I feel off center to this, but I'm not. Um, it gets wacky when you spin it. Yeah. So when you spin it, you can see where all the long parts are and then using the tooth toothy thinning shears, I just take these away. These shears cut a lot, so they will cut all of it if you keep chopping in the same place. But it does it a little less severely than the, um, the other scissors do. So this takes a little bit of uh, grooming, which is a lot of fun. Most people like doing this kind of stuff. I don't save my fur that is my bits that are cut from felting in general because I just don't find them very useful. Maybe if you were going to stuff something or something like that. But. So I want to take quite a bit away. This is pretty puffy. I can comb it too. If it comes into alignment where a whole bunch are just pointing the same direction, 
just give that a twist so that they get more more random. That's what you want when you make a feather, but not what you want when you're going for a plume. There's some interesting sayings. I have some proverbs, but then just some general sayings, I guess. Oh that my gosh. I'm sure so many, is it idioms? Is that the right yeah, word? Yeah, like there's come so many cats. Cat. Like a lot come from horses too. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Hit me with some. Um, well, when the cat's away, the mice will play is. Everybody uses that. Everybody uses that one. The cat is honest when the meat is out of her reach. <laughs> it's interesting. The cat, okay. the cat is a good friend, but she scratches. <laughs> <laughs> that was me the other night. I have a cat who I call a thug. He's huge. And I had fallen asleep on the couch and he curled up on my stomach. And I was like, I was afraid to get up because he was cozy. <laughs> he was being friendly. But the second you do something Don't that mess he's with him. <laughs> happy about, <laughs> there was no incident. I did, yeah, I did get up unscathed. Okay, next thing we're going to do is wrap this wire. And I'm going to use the off-white chunky core, and I want to wrap it as tightly as possible because that's just going to give us a nice solid start to our shape. And I'm going to work with taking about an eight inch piece and I'm going to quarter it. When I quarter half or quarter fiber, I like to make a window in the middle and then go up and down. That just makes a very smooth part and makes the smoothest um, piece of roving without pulling it apart and making it too fuzzy. When I go from here, I feel like it makes it too fuzzy and it's, it's too easy to get off course. So I just have a habit of going from the middle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of these quarters and wrap this wire tightly. So to, whenever I start wrapping, I, I kind of overlap the wrap I just made and that automatically holds, holds it down. Then you can start moving. This wire is a little wobbly because it's not a very thick wire. So I draft as I go and I keep my fingers really close to each other so that I'm supporting the wire so that I can pull the fiber tight as I go around. I always wrap around and away from myself. I feel like that's easier to pull the fiber tight, tight, tight versus if you're coming towards yourself, it's a little awkward to get the fiber tight as you go around. So just some, some habits a few people like over the years have said, I can't get my wrapping tight. And they were, they were bringing the fiber towards them. And as soon as they changed, they were able to get the wrapping tighter. People definitely want to watch your fingers very closely. Yeah. Keeping everything Except that you're left-handed. Except so. that I'm left-handed. So if you're right-handed, it's going to look like this. And you're going to go out, and then you're going to turn around and go back. Okay, so this is tight. I don't really need to felt it, but if you need to, just hit it here and there to secure, secure everything. And then the next step is to put it on the end of a tool. I'm going to use the flat side of the Zuli tool. And I want the tail hanging right off the tip. And then we're going to wrap this whole thing and we're going to make, I'm calling it a sweet potato because <laughs> that's cute. Um, but we're going to make just, that's the bait. That's the basis of the body is this, this shape right here. So the, at first, because I'm holding this down, I'm going to start halfway down and go towards the tail and back up. So I'm just going to get it anchored. 
again, as tight and smooth as I can. And then I'm gonna use the facet of the tool to taper the end, go at this angle, and then hit this angle and come back. And that's gonna make a nice, tight, tapered, tapered angle. Then I can pick up from there. If you press it and smooth it, it should, it should stay definitely enough for you to keep, keep wrapping. If not, maybe stab it two you or could three stab times it. carefully. Yeah, you could stab it along your tool. Just there's not much wool on here right now, so be careful not to nick your tool. Now we're going to go towards the top. Does that pen tool have two or three? I just have. I usually have two. Two. I like that I can put them in a line, and sometimes three is like too much. Um, I don't know. I've I've gotten to where I almost always only use two. Maybe unless I was doing something really big that I needed to. So I'm just working my way back and forth. I used all of the three remaining pieces and we're gonna do that again basically. But I think instead of an eight inch piece, I'm gonna pull, this is a two, four, six, eight, ten. What? Yeah, it's just it's just gonna get us there a little faster, I think. Or with less pieces. You know you make people hungry. What did I say? You name things after food. Like the taco. Oh, oh, I know. Did I just say the something? The sweet potato. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so just wrap some more. And starting to bulk up more in the center. So I'm going to do one more um, wrap down here at the butt. This is going to be the butt one more angled out and back. And then I'm gonna do one more after this. So three, uh, three 10 inch quarters. But basically we end up with a shape, we're gonna end up with a shape that's about an inch and a half in um, diameter, but I'm not quite there yet. After this piece, I should be good. This is gonna stay tapered. If anything, you want it wider at the body and the head. So this piece, I'm gonna concentrate at the middle and the top. All right, that should do it. Now that we have a lot of wool on here, we can definitely stab away. So this is going to be slightly more rounded, the side that the wrapped wire is on, and this side's going to be a little bit more flat. So when you slide it off the tool, this is probably going to be the belly of the kitten well, it's going to be the belly of the kitten either way. If you're making a sleepy kitty, you're going to see, you know, this side's more rounded and this side's more flat. So that's how you want it to curl. Otherwise, you're fighting, fighting the wool. So stab back on the top of, this is going to be the top of the head. Just watch your fingers. I'm angling pretty much at 90 degrees to this. So just going straight down. And that's going to keep the fiber from stretching out, make it nice and rounded. And then do the same thing to the tail. This is a little more tricky. You gotta bend the tail out of the way and really watch your hands here. Come you stab on. yourself, you'll be feeling that for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I haven't done that in a long time. I think I stabbed myself and or broke needles on the whale. Oh. I know I broke needles on the whale. 
Might be one of the only times you stabbed yourself filming. Yeah. That is, it's a little sweet potato. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to save this piece. Um, it's a little too long for the next shapes. And if I split it in half, it's a little bit too short. So we're just going to set that last quarter aside if you even still have it. Now, this is where you're going to want to think about if you're making a sitting or sleeping kitten. I'm going to make a sitting kitten. And from here on out, I'm going to think of this tail of coming backwards. So this is his belly. This is his back. And now I have my, my orient, I'm orientated <laughs> to my kitten. If you're making a sleeping kitten, the tail can come just kind of almost just continue out. But the next few shapes are going to be the same, but it is just important to start setting your intentions into your, into your wool kitten mind. Okay. We're going to take, um, an eight inch piece six to eight and quarter it. We're going to make four rectangles on the Zoli tool. This is where you need to decide your nose color. All oh, right. Thank you. Yes. So on the, um, seal point kitten, I'm using white for everything, but I've been making the nose out of the charcoal. That way I automatically have a gray to blend towards the white. And then on the black kitten, if I'm making a tuxedo kitten, I want to make the nose in white. If you want the nose white, this one, I made the nose white and it was a lot of work because I was working over black and that's, that's no bueno. It's better to work over white. If you know you want the nose to be white, if you don't want white on the face, you're going to make this shape out of charcoal as well. This little guy has a black face. I just put a little bit of white on the chin. So that's what his dark whole face is dark. I'll just leave him down here in case we need to refer to him again. Okay. On the Zoli tool, I'm going to use the flat end. If you don't have this, if you have a ruler, that's sort of somewhat the same width that will work. And I'm basically going to wrap in the same place. I am going to do ever so slightly an angle each way, but I'm not traveling up and down the tool. And so by angling each way, it builds up the center of the shape a little bit. And if you draft your fiber out, when you close out, you're going to have a nice smooth shape without a chunky end that you have to felt. You just slide it off and it is whole. So I'm going to make four of these, except I'm going to make one of them in charcoal. I also like to give my fiber a tug before I start wrapping. That just helps, helps your wrapping go smoothly. Arabian proverb. Mm -hmm. The cat was created when the lion sneezed. <laughs> That's interesting. It's the almost lion. It's a little, it's a little insult <laughs> to the cat. Yeah. You are lion spew. <laughs> <laughs> With the charcoal, since it's not as chunky as or wide as the off-white chunky core, I'm going to take a six inch piece and split it in half. And that should be about the same as, you know, amount of fiber as my other shapes. Okay, this is going to be the nose. And generally, when I pull a shape off of the Zoli tool, I can feel one side tapering 
and one side having a little bit more bulk. So if you pull your shape off and you can sense that one side has more bulk and one side fades away, then feel that and use the bulky side as the side that you're going to round out. So just going to tap back on it gently. I want to do this with some focus because I need this to be, no, I need it to be evenly felted because this, this is, we're going to stab into it to make the muzzle. So if it's bumpy or it, it has a weak spot, it's not going to work very well. So it's important that this shape be very consistent. If you find that it's not, I would just go ahead and make another one. Don't try to fix this one. So I'm not stabbing as much as I usually do. Um, just kind of gently tapping at it to make sure it's consistent. Okay. All right, these three, if one's bigger, pull that one out, but you want two the same for the cheeks and one for the back of the head. So I'm going to use this for the back of the head. And this is going to go around the back of the kitten's head right here, not on the top, around the back to build out the depth of the head. And I just take the tapered edges and stab them in there, my little blender. Whenever we make shapes, we want them to blend together. We're further sculpting them together. So that's what that looks like. <laughs> this is the back of his head. And then these two. If you have that tapered end versus that bulky end, the tapered end goes up over the top of the head and the bulky end comes around the side. And this time, instead of tapering this shape down into the cat body, I'm tucking it back up. I wanna keep it up on the kitten's face. I don't want it to slide all the way down here. But this part at the top, I do want it to blend and taper over the top of the head. And the back side of this shape just goes right over that back of the head bump. You're not trying to like define this in any way. You want these two things to actually blend together, which they will, they're totally gonna get covered with fur. So but that's why this is such a great <clears throat> project. All of these shapes are kind of just a base they're sort of, sort of become a non-issue as you keep keep felting so taper over the top of the head and then tuck the bottom up basically we want these ending in the same line as the back of the head All right, now this is the fun part. The nose, this is the muzzle, it's the whole muzzle, is going to come off of the face with the unfelted edge going up over the forehead. But we need to sort of more aggressively shape and felt this. So I'm gonna start by tacking it on. And I need to think of it as kind of shrinking it in the bridge of the nose and rocking it backwards. Um, let me find a reference picture here. It definitely looks wacky now. Yes, looks very wacky right now. But once you've made one or two of these, you're going to totally understand what you're doing. This is what we're working on right now. And this whole muzzle area comes a little farther off and a little lower than these. These are the cheek pieces that we just put on. So it's okay. This doesn't need to stay up here. It's okay that it comes a little bit 
um, lower than this. But what we do need to do is pinch it in at the bridge of the nose right here because the eyes are going to go to either side of it. So to do that, I'm going to kind of hold it in the position I want and then stab it on each side of the bridge of the nose. And then I'm going to take that strong needle that I advised you to have. This is a 36. And I'm going to just draw the mouth and nose. So I'm going to start with a dent in the middle and really watch your fingers on this. Just right in the middle, up and down. And then come across to make the mouth and chin. And then a Y shape to start to indicate the nose. If you need to, look at a picture. This is why it's important that this shape be, um, see, now it's not so wacky all of a sudden, right? <laughs> like it's a little less wacky, um, that this shape be very consistent because as you're stabbing into it, if it's inconsistent, it's going to, it's going to go off. There are opportunities to correct that. Um, but it's just nice to start with what you need. Okay. I keep that needle aside because I'd like to make sure I know what I'm picking up. All right, so that's the basics of the head shapes for now. Then we're gonna work on this lower body and start to figure out the, the body shapes of our cat. I still have one um, eight inch piece and I have that 10 inch piece. So I'm just gonna take a couple of inches off of that. But basically you need two more quarters and we're gonna make two more rectangles. This one, I'm pretty much just going around, straight, straight around. And these are gonna be the little thighs. And so on my sitting kitten, well, either one, they're gonna go right on the side. One side tapers and connects to the body and the other end you want to be, again, quite blunt and chunky. And I put it just up from the bottom of the sweet potato because um, a foot is going to go against that. So for now, I'm just tacking it on. Sometimes I even wrap the whole thing once I get it tacked on. So different angle would be like this. So just right on the side. Okay. Now for a sleeping kitten, I like to make a little soft pillow that would be, that would be like a belly. This goes right between the thighs on the front. And for a sitting kitten, I like to make a little soft pillow that is the chest, so I put it up higher, and then one on the back just to round the back out a little bit. So to do so, since we're making sitting, let's use, um, well, we'll stick with the eight inch is working well, and quarter that. Does the sleeping kitty only get the belly? I just do the belly because I mean, you could put a little more wool back here if you wanted, but it just, it mm -hmm. gets covered with fur and it gets big. Mm -hmm. These, these it. are always in danger of like getting too big because we're adding all this fluff to it. So I'm really trying to be minimal mm -hmm. in, in these shapes. So a soft pillow, I like to fold in my hand and that makes it uh, a little more sculptable <laughs> than if I wrap it on the tool. I, 
these days, if I wrap a tool, I can't almost can't help but wrap it tightly. Um, so I just I just roll it in my hand, and now it's super squishy. So on the sitting kitten, one is going to go on the back, and kind of behind the um, the little thighs to give it that rounded back shape that they have when they sit. And since it's nice and soft, I can just sculpt it right into place. And then if it were sleeping, I would just put that, make it a little belly. Okay. So maybe not quite so much. And same thing for the chest. I'm going to take a little bit of this wool off. I don't want it huge. Roll it in my hands. I'm rolling about inch and a half, I guess, a little bigger than an inch. And then I just want to um, secure this up where their like sternum would be. So I'm just tucking it under the head, under the nose, and I'm even kind of pushing it to poof it a little bit. So newborn kittens, totally helpless when they're mm -hmm. born, which yeah. I mean, I think most, you know, I guess some animals like get up and walk and stuff, right? Like they do it their thing. It depends if they're prey or predator. Well, that's one of the things. Okay. Like a horse or a, like they got to be able to move okay. quickly. Well, they are dependent for nourishment, warmth, mm -hmm. and even elimination. It says, oh, they have to be like stimulated. They do from birth to five weeks, birth to about five weeks. I feel like we do that with our babies. Even if <laughs> we're like, did it poop? <laughs> right. <laughs> so if they don't have their mother, like if there's a human taking care of them, they have yeah. to take a little warm, wet cotton ball and like stroke its belly. Yeah. Get things going so it can oh my gosh. go to the bathroom or else they could they could die. I had no, no idea. I yeah, thought that just learning. sort of happened. We're learning so much. Okay. So we need to make ears and eyes, and then we'll be in the sort of face detail point. And then we also need to make four Foots. Four foots and then a lot. Then the 18 pink peas <laughs> and four pink pads. <laughs> let's um let's do ears and eyes and then we'll tackle the foots. Yes. Okay, so for the kitten ears, I was doing a folding technique, but now I'm doing a stab, 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 and then cut technique. So, um, so these are cut edges and it's working really well, especially because if they're too big, you can cut them some more. So for the seal point cat, I'm going to use gray, the charcoal gray, and I have a half a piece left from making the nose and I'm going to put, I'm going to make a little two um two inch squares so i want the charcoal gray at the top this is about two inches two inches and then i'm going to use my other light gray here here it is i found it it's rolled up with my black which i'm also going to need so I'm going to take a two inch piece, split it in half and do the light gray at the bottom. So I have a little bit of a um, color change here. And I don't want to just put them next to each other like that. I want to let, let them overlap slightly. And I'm going to use my punch tool because this just does the trick very quickly. Flip it over, go this way. Okay. 
When you're punching directly into a felting surface, surface whether it's a stab it or foam or any brush, um, make sure you lift your project off and that way it doesn't get embedded. That's actually what wears your surface out faster is the fibers embedding in there and then you pulling them out more so than the needles themselves. Okay, um, now I'm gonna take another piece of the gray, split it in half and let the fringe just go vertically. And this is gonna strengthen the ear shape by having you know, a different direction of fiber and it's also going to blend these two grays together. So, fun fact, mm -hmm. cats are born deaf, mm -hmm. but by four weeks, their hearing is fully developed, and they hear better than us. That is some their speedy transformation. They are born blind and deaf. So this is the back of the ear, this is the front of the ear, and on the front of the ear, we're gonna take some of this bunny bear and do the same thing. We're gonna put a vertical wispy piece to strengthen it and to blend some pink in there. So it'll be thicker at the bottom and more wispy towards the top. Once we took a kitten cat in, this is when I lived in this city with my mom and she's not an animal person, but my new stepdad knew at that time, had a cat, okay, loved his cat. So sadly, we brought the cat home, but it wasn't, you know, used to its new home. And it, it I don't know if it got, let out or put down or it, it ran away never never saw okay. her again so then we took in a cat and I don't know how I was only 10 so I don't I'm not privy to the adult uh, decisions that were going on <laughs> but didn't know it was gonna have babies oh so then we had a cat yeah, that had babies oh gosh <laughs> she just made a little space in my closet and had all her kittens so sweet. Then we had to find homes for all those kittens. Mm. So this is just stab, stab, stab until you feel that it's well felted, unified. And then we're going to cut this into a rounded triangle. So I'm going to come up the side and then round it towards the tip. If you want to stack them up, you can do that. And right now, I'm just I'm just making it symmetrical. Um, I actually don't like to do that because I like to see. And so then, yeah, a rounded triangle is it's called a rouleau. Oh, triangle. look at you! So instead of a triangle, would be like this. We rounded this part out, right? Um, a rouleau. R e u l e a u x. I'm wow. guessing rouleau. It's a plump triangle with rounded edges. Yes. That's what you're making. So I'm just going in on the edge a little bit to make sure the edges are felted. That is exactly what I'm making. And then I, then this last kitten, I tried folding the inner edge of the ear over a little bit, which I think worked pretty well. You don't have to. I mean, they're not really like that. I guess it's, it's not so much you see it from the front but let me find a good picture here. They have some depth to oh them. Oh my gosh, they are. They definitely have depth to them. So 
um, it just helps, I guess, to round out the ear before you put it on the head, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So I'm just gonna, thinking of that as I stab this, of this edge being turned inward, just sort of getting that a little bit established. I love the way fiber has, just make sure you do opposite sides. Fiber has a memory, so even if you're not completely, you know, stabbing something to until it, it's like a sculpted in marble, um, it still helps. So we made the gray ear. I'm going to show the black ear. It's the same process. I just want to show um, the layout. Since I don't have two colors of gray, I'm just going to do black horizontally and a thin bit of black vertically, a little bit less. I don't necessarily want to double up the fiber amounts here. So we're, we're sort of sandwiching a horizontal piece of black in between a vertical black on the back, and then we put the pink on the front. And sorry, I've been making the white cat, so I've got white fiber schmutz in my stab it. Yeah, but see, this is where we're left after. Now, sometimes the pink pollutes the back, like it stabs through and you might not want that pink on the back. If you're particular about that, I would stab the front as much as you, you know, feel is needed and then turn it over and stab just a little bit of black on the back. Now, it's going to stab through the pink, but you just have to pick the lesser of lesser of two evils. Especially if you put the black on the back towards the tip of the ear, that's okay because that's where the pink is thinning anyway. And this whole base of the ear you don't you don't see. So this is like where it's coming through, but that's okay because that's where you want it to blend. Blend away anyway. Oh look, I just went this way. Oh well. You get the idea. And then you would cut these um, just like we did the gray ones. Two slightly folded kitten ears. Now, when we put the ears onto the head, like I said, we want to get the depth. So it's going against the cheek pieces with the depth coming around onto the back of the head like that. So you definitely want this pucker. So maybe even go ahead and felt that to establish it before you do the sides. So I really have a pucker back here. What I want you to avoid is this, because that's not going to look like flat against the cheek piece. If you put it flat against the cheek piece, it's not going to look good. So let it touch the cheek piece, but pinch it back onto the back of the head. And make sure it has that depth. And these aren't um, complicated steps or shapes. They're just all important. <laughs> like when you do a, a project like this, that's simple in its construction, um, but the execution is important. Okay, this ear is a little gigantic, so I'm going to take some of it off. I'm actually going to unround this edge a little bit.
and maybe unround this edge a little, just a little bit to match. All right, we will recheck once we have fur. That's looking good. Okay, I wanna get some eyes so that I know where my kitten's eyes are. I'm gonna use black, take off a two inch piece, and then I'm gonna pull a quarter inch, like a little strip. It's probably about a quarter of that, I guess, maybe a little less. And let's go ahead and use the face ace to make a nice consistent shape. One option is to roll it in your hand to make a little round ball, but I think if we just wrap the face ace, I want it to have some give, so I'm not gonna put it down on the tip. That will make a very tight shape. I'm gonna put it up closer to two and a half between the second and third marks on the face ace, and I wanna keep my fiber tightly um, in that quarter inch space not let it you know fan out into a wide ribbon and this should give me a nice eyeball and we're going to make two of those so this is the second place i'm reading it mm -hmm. must be true mm -hmm. okay um all kittens are born blue-eyed okay so melanin which is what gives them their darker color does not move into the eyes until seven to 12 weeks old. Okay. And their ear canals are closed, which is why they're born deaf. Oh. And that's, um, takes 10 to 14 days for the ear canals to open. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry for my, my head is in the shot, but I got to lean in a little. When you felt an eyeball, you want to come in around the edges rather than stab right in the middle because you're trying to keep that nice round shape. So I just stab at the edges. Um, and these are going between our nose, our muzzle piece and our cheek piece. I mean, if you look at a reference picture, you, <laughs> you can see where the eyes go. Um, kind of nestling it down in there a little bit. I'm gonna use my stronger needle for a second because I... Okay, and we'll just do a couple more things to the face before we move on to feet, which is going to be a little gray shape right here and a little gray on the forehead as well. We need to bring the muzzle towards the cheek. This is, this is too much of a dramatic um, change here. We need... We need this, this space. <laughs> right now it's like ends here and then there's cheek here, but we need this connector. So I'm gonna use the gray, the lighter gray, and I'm gonna take a two inch piece and then um, split it in half this direction. Just make sure my pieces are, are uniform here. And then I'm gonna fold it like a taco and then I'm going to fold another half an inch over so that gives me a bit of structure at the top but still leaves this fringe so I have a rolled edge with some thickness and then some fringe so I'll show that again about two inches long and then I mean less fringe Fringe is fine. Longer with fringe is fine. And I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold the top half inch over again. This is called double decker taco. We just came at it uh, without any stabbing, just by folding. Okay. So these are going to come off of the side of the muzzle and blend to the cheek. Nothing too extreme here in terms of uh, felting 
you know, shapes or anything. You're just making that transition a little softer. I have a slight angle up, I guess. I'm not too worried about making the the shape under the eye yet. That will be that will be a different piece. Did you know that kittens of the same litter don't necessarily have the same father? Oh, that explains a lot. I have a brother and sister who do not seem related. <laughs> In one litter, not all of the, the queen is the cat, the female, what they're calling it here. Not all of the queen's eggs have to be necessarily fertilized by the same tom. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That's looking good. I'm going to do another um, piece between the eyes here just to, this is a quite an extreme dip I have. Um, this time I'm going to use about the same amount of gray, but instead of folding it twice, I'm just going to fold it once. Here, I'll show you. I'll put it down, stab the center, fold it over, and stab it together. Just want to this and pointing the fringe up and just taking away that dramatic dip by filling it in a little bit. So that is where we will leave the face for now. Alrighty, I want to show some little kitten foots. I made I was just caught up in making all of these pink feet, which, but sometimes on the um, seal point cat, I like to put some gray toes. It just, it's just super cute. It's, and it's accurate. I think on darker feet, they often have gray toe pads. So these are a mix. Um, I used charcoal. I think I used, I actually use light gray and charcoal and pink. So have fun with it. Put different colors. I forgot and used all pink on these, but I made my black kitten's toes and did a variety on there. For the black cat, you will use your black. Well, I like to use the charcoal core and then a little bit of black on top. And then if you want a black and white foot, charcoal core and off-white chunky core with a little bit of black on top and a little bit of white on top. So I will show one of those and then I'm going to show how to do the seal point foot. So just a, a few different colors involved, I guess is what I'm saying. So let's start with the, with the seal point and get a um, about a six inch piece of core and quarter it. This might be a little bit much, but we'll see. And then we want about a three inch piece of gray quartered. All four of these feet are going to be the same. On the black kitten, you can do all black feet. You could do two black and one white. You can do a combination. But on the seal point cat, I make the color all the same. And then we want about two inches of light gray and go ahead and quarter that. So each foot is getting one of these pieces. And I'm going to work on the round end of the Zoli tool. I'm going to start with my off white and I'm going around and then back. I'm going just under two inches. I want the whole 
foot to be two inches total. So if you just watch a few, see where I'm heading with this, then you can make one. Then I'm gonna put the dark gray on the end and I wanna make sure I overlap with this off-white. Don't put it out here so they don't touch. They need to have some overlap for structure. So just going right around there. So now you can see that is two inches from there to there. And then just a real thin gray piece right around both. And that's going to pull them together and make that third point. Now, I do want a little bit of white on here. So let's do a fourth layer of Serafina white and quarter that. I have a three inch piece that I'm quartering. Oh, this is so elaborate. <laughs> and now I'm going to put the white over the off white chunky core. Okay, I'm gonna stab it a little bit before I slide it off. And then I'm gonna slide it off. And then I want to leave this end unfelted, but gently stab back on the toe tip here. And I'm keeping, I'm gonna, it's actually gonna get flattened out. That's why we use this wide tool and not something skinny like the face ace or a pindle because we want this space in here to be able to flatten the foot and leg out a little bit. But I'm already starting to consider that this is the top of my foot and this is where the pads will be. So I'm rounding this toe paw around from the top, but leaving this side flat. I'm not trying to round both sides. I want this side to be flat and this side to be stabbed back on itself and a little bit rounded. And that's it. I'm not going to overwork this too much. I want to make sure it has good structure. It's nice and solid. Doesn't have any weak spots, but I don't want to super felt it because I have so much more I have to felt all these little pads in and I'm going to do some reverse needling and that's going to lock everything much tighter. So I'll show this again. We started with our off white strip. It's good to go out and back. Anything that you're wrapping on a tool, go out and back. That's going to give it structure. If someone didn't have a Zuli tool, they could use maybe a wooden spoon handle wooden spoon. or... I mean, a pencil is okay. It's a little thin. It's a little thin. It's the other end of the Zuli tool. It's a lot trickier to yeah. um, come up with a substitution, Yeah, especially for people who live internationally or have a harder time. Mm -hmm. So we have our off-white, we have our dark gray, and put the light gray overlapping both that's going to make it uh, especially once we reverse needle that's going to make a really nice blend and then the white is going on this end of the foot so in this case the stab through is part of the blender um, it's like a good thing, but we will do, we will reverse needle as well. So I'm stabbing back on the end of the foot and kind of making the whole thing flat. And then this is the bottom. But not going to overdo it right now. I'll just go ahead and make all four, I think. These can also get too big quickly, so just be aware of how much fiber you're using and how 
these shapes are turning out proportionate to your kitten. See if you can finish this. <clears throat> An optimist would say the glass is half full. A pessimist would say the glass is half empty. What would a cat owner say? A cat owner would say the glass is on the floor. Yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> the glass is knocked over. <laughs> oh my gosh. My sister was telling me about, she came into animals later in life. So okay. she has an older, at this point, older lab. And then they have her, their daughter's cat, Gigi. Which I feel like happens a lot when young adults get animals. They might end up with their parents. But <laughs> she, Amy says that Finley, the lab, and Gigi are in cahoots. <laughs> now, Finley is already kind of like a toddler. He's very intelligent. And he pushes Amy's buttons. Like, he'll bark when she's on the phone. Remember okay. when you were on your oh, phone yeah. the kids were little? And they're like, mom, mom, mom. <laughs> he's, he's in the background. <laughs> So, of course, she gives him a treat, which she's on the phone. I bark. I get treats. <laughs> and then, um, so, but now Gigi's in the picture and Amy's like, first line of attack is to Finley, like, start moving around. Like, this is when they want her to get up in the morning. Finley will start moving around. It's like, then Gigi will, like, get in her bed and, like, get up in her face. So she yeah. kind of pushes her away. She goes... And then she gets on the dresser <laughs> and starts knocking stuff off while she's looking at Amy. Like just... <laughs> oh my Which gosh. the dog can then get. Then she uses like the headboard as like a jungle gym. Oh my gosh. <laughs> starts, like, oh gosh. They are in cahoots. Voila, we have four foots. Animals keep life interesting. That's for sure. Pretty much my entire adult life, I had more than one dog. Mm. Um, which is so fun, because there's really nothing better than watching dogs play. So I do miss that, but... All right, this foot got a little fat, so I'm going to roll it in my hand, which will uh, elongate it because um, I don't want it to be quite so wide. Not sure how that happened. If you want to make one foot o with open toes, like, you know, when a cat's either playing or kneading, um, you'll want to find the skinniest one and work with that. So I'm going to say this one. And you can even kind of pull it just a little bit skinnier because what's going to happen is you're going to have two, two pads in the center here and then two coming off. So let's go ahead and show our pads on this hand. And then we can go from there. So I need to make a lot of these little teeny tiny shapes. And I need a very small amount of fiber, a little tiny two inch wisps for the toes, maybe a little slightly bigger for the palm pad. But let's see, let's see what a piece like this looks like here. Let me zoom in a little bit. So that's like a wispy two-inch piece that you're going to get wispy at least eight piece. out of. Mm, maybe six. So I want these to be rather tight. So I'm using this little needle tool. Uh, you could use a skewer or a toothpick. But we want these to be little solid, um, like BBs kind of. I said P earlier, not quite as big as a P. This is just a little bit much. So about like that. A hefty lentil. <laughs> yeah, hefty lentil. Let 
and you really want to keep this nice and narrow. Um, don't let it spread out. It's kind of like a baby pea. A petite pea? Yeah. And then just a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit farther up the tool and let it be slightly longer. This is more like a quarter inch shape. And this will be the little palm pad. So I definitely use my single needle in this process. There's lots of cute pictures of toes in the in the book. I'm sure you could find online. Um, I don't look too closely at them because then I'll become a slave to detail that I don't want to get into. But you might want to. That's the cool thing about this project is you can you can take it any direction you want in terms of the amount of detail because these are like actually life size. Um, so with the little open paw, I'm putting a little more space between these center two ones and then these are going to go off to the side and then I just need to make a little <laughs> toe over them. So this is like a more open foot than I'm going to make on the rest of them. We can use our strong needle to make a nice dent down the middle. And then we can use little pieces of gray to make these other little toes. I'm going to wrap it on here, kind of like I just did the palm, but very loosely. And then I'm going to stab back on one end. And fringe out this end and just stick her on there. Just a little toe. So this is fussy, but this fun, fussy. more fun than wrapping tiny fingers. Oh my gosh. So much better than wrapping tiny fingers, <laughs> I'd say. I'm going to go dark on this one. I don't know why. See the difference, I guess. I think the face ace might be better. I need a little bit more. A little more space, a little less condensed. Stabbing back on one end of the toe. And then fringing it out. I don't I really don't want too much fiber here. We're not trying to make a catcher's mitt. Oh, that's so cute. Now I'll show how the reverse needle works. Okay. 
we have <laughs> different colors going on here, but this just, if you just pull it out, it just blends it all away. So you ended up adding those, but you could just do a simpler paw in the sense that you wrap and we're then just, you just put the pads on. Yes, that's what we're going to do with these other ones. I just wanted to show like how that's done. Um, Very cute. Yeah, it is. It is a cute direction to take it. So I can do that a couple of times um, to really, you know, blend the foot out. I did use two different colors mm -hmm. on these toes. That's why that's why it's like that. But on this kitten, this is really cute, especially on the sleepy one, because mm -hmm. they're sort of like, you know, needing the air maybe. This, um, the sitting one, it doesn't make as much sense. But especially because mostly I was making them with all of their feet down. But if you do put one paw up, um, it can be cute. So this one I put straight up. This one I put kind of curled like maybe it's going to have a little yarn or mm -hmm. yarn or something <laughs> they don't have armatures in their legs so you can felt them once they're on especially you can felt them quite firmly into place how you want them so for the other toes it's the same process except we're going to keep all the paws on the toe with the palm and then the back feet also get um a little a little bean they have a little um heel what the heck is the word i'm looking for it's is it a dew claw or no, no it's that's not a dew claw it's back here there's totally a word that i'm not not thinking of at the moment. Um. Oh, okay. I just wrapped a shape and then pulled it wacky, oh, and okay. that's what happens when you do that. It was kind of a bad patch together, a piece of wool. A carpal pad? Oh, there you go. Called a carpal pad. That. That is what we need. Yeah, they're definitely furry between their toe beans. So on two of the feet, you're going to want that carpal pad and then the palm pad and then four toes. So I want to show a black foot uh, for the black kitten just because the process is just the, just the layering of the colors really is what I want to show. So for the white kitten, we did the off white and then the dark gray, the light gray and the white for the, for the black kitten, we're going to do the charcoal. So I'm going to take a six inch piece and quarter it. And then a uh, little bit of off white. I have a nice little four inch piece here that's left. I am winding down on my off white chunky core, but that's okay. All my shapes are made. Um, so plenty of core here, but just to give you an idea of where we are with it. And then small amount of black. I'm going to quarter a three inch strip. It doesn't need to be very much. It's just to get the color on there. And then a small amount of white. Oh, actually you don't even need, all, I mean, unless you're making all four have socks. Oh, right. You, you don't need very much, but I'll just show how this goes. Whoops. So a black solid black foot would just be the charcoal gray. You want to go out and back. I'm actually going to use a second piece because without adding all that white, 
I kind of portioned this for just the top of the leg, but since we're going to make the whole thing black, I'm going to add this second piece. So keeping it two inches, they, they, they definitely lengthen after you're working on them. So I wouldn't go longer than two inches because it's going to spread out. And then just a thin layer of black. This only has to be one pass. You don't have to go out and back with the black. Slide that off. And this is your black foot. I'm going to roll it in my palm just to smooth it and lengthen it a little bit. Growing up, Bill had a cat named Spats, which Aww. was black with, yes, I guess Spats is boots, boots Spats maybe is, in German, um, or the little, little covers on your boots. Yeah, <laughs> like so cute. She was such a funny cat. It's adorable. So that's the black foot. And then the foot with the sock or a little, oh gosh, I keep picking up the wrong tool. We're going to do out and back with the gray, about an inch and a half. And then a little mitten in the off-white. And then black over the gray. Now this isn't a blendy thing. This is more distinct than the um, than the seal point. So, and then just a little piece of white, just to make this off white nice and bright. So when because this doesn't overlap as much, you have more risk of having a weak spot right there. So just be aware of that. So that is how you make the little white sock foot. Okay, I am going to work away at my feet, making all of the little, <laughs> all of the little toes that I need and putting them on all four feet. And then you do the same and we'll come back and put our legs on and then it's time for fur, which is very exciting. Okay, so I have all of my feet prepared. I have a set of four for my seal point cat and I have a set of black ones for my black cat. And this is great because I can show you on the, re the reclining cat and the sitting cat, the placement of the legs. Okay, I'll start with the sitting cat. And I did make one open paw, which I'm gonna have, you could kind of have it scooping or sticking up. I'm gonna stick it up like that little <laughs> waving cat, but these, you you want to imagine that there is an elbow. So that is, that's the way that I am positioning this. And I'm just gonna tack down the back end of it, the leg. And then I can sort of felt the arm into the position that we want it to be in. I'm so used to working with armatures. This is different uh, working without an armature. And then these are the back legs. Um, and this is the other front paw. Now, same thing. I want to angle this and stab it into a sitting, a, a, yeah, standing position or a... So I'm kind of turning it at 90 degrees and giving it, felting it into place as much as I can. And then that one is going to go straight down in front of the kitten, like so. 
So I put it even with the what will be the floor and then bring this around. I almost forgot. I want to put a little bit of pink on the belly before I get any further. So I'm just going to take my bunny bear, restack it, get a nice two inch square of it and go right across the belly here. This is mostly going to get covered, but I don't fur the entire belly. So this just gives it a really cute little pink stomach underneath all the fur. You're still trying to leave roundness to the belly. You're not like stabbing it yeah, super the, flat. The sitting, um, the sitting kitten doesn't have too much Oh, his chest is belly. round, that's right. Yeah. So, so now I can felt this hand down into place a little bit more firmly with the pink under there. So on a cat, on a kitten that was laying down, mm -hmm. you'd try to keep the belly yeah. poofy. Yeah, I'll show it on the, on the black one. And then the hind legs we want coming out from under the thigh. If you look at a picture of a kitten sitting, you can see about where their legs go, but it's going to come sort of wrap around the back. This, all of this doesn't matter because it gets entirely covered with fur. So you basically just want it sticking out the right, kind of the right distance. So it's a little awkward. I'm felting into the underneath of the kitten. But putting all the fur on is going to make this all stay together. So I'm just pulling the fringe up around the back. Another thing I can do is move the tail out of the way and put a little bit of white across the butt here. That'll just kind of finish it off because I don't, I don't fur under here. So I need a little, I'm just trying to watch those little pads, keep my pads. Okay, on a sleeping cat, um, this is what Kyla was referring to, my little belly pillow. <laughs> we have our thigh pillows, our belly pillow, and that's it. You could put you could put a little more rounded back, but like I said, it gets a lot of fur, so I haven't been do I haven't been doing that. So these feet we want to stick a little more up instead of down like this. Kind of like these totally chill. Oh, he's got some big feet. I feel like these are big feet. Oh, well. Once there's fur, they won't look quite as big. That's true. And you can angle them different ways. Maybe he's a little pigeon toed. Uh-oh, I need one with another little, I forgot, a toe pad.
A kitten is in the animal world what a rosebud is in the garden. Aww. There's some very, very cute <laughs> cat things. Very pro kitten. <laughs> Kittens are angels with whiskers. Aw. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's, you could take some of your kittens, take little pictures and put those right on there. Oh my gosh, with little wings. A meow <laughs> massages the heart. <laughs> some meows. I, I was going to say, that's about that all depends. meows. <laughs> Certain meows in the middle of the night could probably... Give Stop heart the heart, attack. yeah. All right, well, that's looking adorable. This paw I made more open. I don't know why I always put those ones on the left. Let me force myself to put it on the right. And since this little kitten's sleeping, I really want to curl this paw up. So I'm going to give it a bit of stabbing in that position, encouraging that. Okay, so that is approximately how I would position one of the sleeping ones. Okay, back to, ooh, I have two sitting kitties there, almost the same. That's the one I was working on yesterday. All right, now it is time for details and fur. So I'm gonna show you a sleepy eye and an open eye. Cat's gonna look a little, a little strange. <laughs> Let's get a reference picture that we like. Oh my gosh, they are so cute. Oh look, his little front. Paws do have mm -hmm. an extra pad. Oh. <laughs> That's why I said, I was like, I'm not going to look because I'm going to see. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. Okay. We're not getting into claws. I can't, I can't handle it. Not in this uh, go round anyway. Getting a little indents for where they'd yeah. be. I mean, they definitely have big paws. Yeah. All right, we'll use this. I'm going to use these guys. Okay. As my guide. We put this little extra piece on. And now I want to use a strong needle and really dent the mouth back farther into the side of the face. At this point, we only had a dent in the actual little piece that we put here. And a little black strip is going to help me see It's gonna help me see exactly what I'm doing here. If you go up a tad, it's super cute and accurate. Now we're gonna make a tiny little pink nose and I, a small piece of pink, maybe restack it. So I've got a little 
trying to make like a little half inch square. And then let's put it down on your felting surface um, going across. And then stab a line in the middle and then stab like an arrow, like a tiny little triangle and fold the two edges in to make a point. Oh, that's a strong needle. That's why I was being so. So we're just making a tiny little triangle. And then we want the tip of the triangle, kind of even grab it, to come down right between the muzzle here. I'm going to zoom in on these facial features. And then come down on the top. We have a little dent of a nostril in each side, which you could put a tiny bit of black in there and we'll do that in a moment. Is that probably a 38 gauge needle you're working with? That was a 38. I just picked up the 36 because I wanted to make this mouth dent. Okay. Oh, that's cute. Yes, this is a 38. All right, we're going to make one eye open and one eye closed because not the way that's not necessarily the way I want my kitten to be, but that way I can show you both. So we have blue and orange. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do blue, but you could, like I said, you could mix them together even. And this is way more fiber than uh, you, you know, we give you way more than you need, but you need, wanna break this merino down. You might have other colors on hand even that you like, but merino isn't too hard to, to break. We just want to eliminate the, the linear form of it. And then I'm going to use about half of what I broke here and I'm going to fold it. If you fold it into a little square, then you can shape it round as you go. If I lose my black edge, that's okay. I can reestablish it. But I really just want to try and get this blue nice and round. Your head's a little bit in the way. Oh, thank you. It's, yeah. It's tough to do these details from a distance. Bill's cat spats would often sit with one eye closed and one eye open. And with the opposite paw, she'd sit on the back of the couch purring with her whole body, like moving from the purring. Uh -huh. And whatever paw, she'd sit with one paw up and the other eye was closed. Oh my like gosh. for so funny. hours, she would sit there. It was, she, she was the most random cat I've ever, <laughs> I've ever That's met. So funny. So I've been making the pupils mainly rounds, but if you do any um, deviation, you want to go uh, vertically. But, you know, depending on how wide you make the pupil, they look all different kinds of ways, so. Just a tiny bit of black. And then we need the teeniest bit of Serafina white the smallest little speck and maybe a 40 gauge needle. Um, I'll twist. Whoops, I had it set aside here. Oh, I did. I did have it set aside um, to 
put that little white dot and I usually put it right where the pupil meets the iris. But that white dot is so important. Okay, <laughs> so funny. And then on the closed eye, I'm going to make a little, um, just basically two little lids. So I'm gonna, on this one, I'm gonna do it in gray, uh, this gray, or no, sorry, white and gray. So I want to make that double decker taco. So a little quarter inch of fiber. I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to fold it in half again. This is a long, I can remove some of that. And that just gives me a rolled edge and a fringy edge. And then I'm going to put the rolled edge against the eye and the fringy edge going onto the cheek. Oh my gosh, this little kitten. Can you see that little kitten? Look at that little. <laughs> oh gosh, maybe I'll maybe I'll try to do that. Really cute markings. Yes. So I'm not quite closing the eye. On this one, I really closed. I really closed the mm. eyes, you know. Super sleepy. Yeah. This one is a little more of a wink situation. Somewhere out there is a cat with one eye open and one eye closed. <laughs> my, one of my cats always does a yawn with a one paw oh, reach. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So I made the same shape in gray. And I'm not going to put the blue in here because the eye is almost closed. So we just want it to look like a black, little black opening. And then I need to make a little um, lower lid for this one. And I'm going to keep this real, real small amount of fiber. Let me stab it a couple of times here. Just to get this little lower lid going. And on this one, I'm not trying to cover the eye that I just made. I'm trying to go swoop under it. Like I said, I can reestablish the black around the eye if I need to. I'm kind of looking at this <laughs> cute little picture for this one. And then we'll make a gray lid. Do you think people are definitely cat people or dog people? Mm -mm. I think there's, animal I think people. there's just animal lovers. I mean, there are people who are more cat people For or dog sure, people, yeah. but those people are maybe not the like full on animal lovers. I don't know. Let's discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd pick a dog before a cat, but I like cats. All right. I'm going to try and turn this, make an angle to this lid to mimic this little kitten here. So I'm making it, giving it a little worry dip. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's subtle. I have had and loved both. All right, let's do a little reverse needling on the muzzle so that we're not looking at all of these crazy, uh, distinct color changes. One thing that I like is these little worry lines that they have coming up off the center of their eye. So if I pull some of the dark gray from underneath out there, I can really accentuate those. 
That's one nice thing about using a contrasting color underneath. You don't have to add fiber to get. Yeah, I might a be color. into the white a little bit here, but because that wasn't as pronounced as I thought it would be. Okay, so I want to just blend a lot of this stuff together, especially right here on the top of the nose. I don't want it to be pink all of the way back like that. And then we want to get these two colors to blend. Using this is a weird feeling. Yeah. Like you're fighting a little bit. And I'm not going to go too much more than this because I need to get the rest of the fur on to see kind of what's what else is needed, what else, what's next, basically. Does a reverse needle felt as it pulls out? Unfelt? What does it do? I know it pulls fiber out. Is that still causing fiber to lock together? Like it's still... I don't think it's felting, but I think it aids in the felting process because now you've taken what you've felted in, you're pulling loose fiber out and you're going to, okay. sometimes you're going to felt it back in. And so it's like really kind of condensing what's happening. Um, so my cat's a little wacky right now, but that's okay. I'm just going to keep going, see what happens. I don't, I need to get this, whoops, wrong needle. I need to get this spot on the kitten that I made the black nose and then decided to make it white, I used a single reverse needle to make the little whisker holes. So that was cool. That worked pretty well. Okay. It is time to fur. Now, this is a time consuming process. So I'm going to demonstrate and especially around the face, and then we may time lapse um, some of it because it's just the same steps over and over again. Um, if you actually want to do me a favor and make me some, you're going to need a bunch of little kind of one and a half inch um, noodles with your off-white chunky core. You could use Serafina white, but either, whichever you have more of, but I think off-white chunky core felt, felt better. So I'm gonna ask Kyla to prepare me some of those. And I already prepared myself this, oh gosh, that's what I was talking about. This big Ooh, stack <laughs> of um, of the alpaca cut in half in gray and white. So I have that ready to go. I'm going to start with some gray. I'm going to go right um, right at the forehead here, kind of under this core wool that I have here. And this is a little bit more fiber than we put into the um, tail, we can work with about kind of like an inch of fiber. In some places you might need a touch less, but you're going to, if you've never done fur before, you're going to center the fiber where you want it to emerge from the, um, from the kitten. And then you're going to pick up a noodle probably this is fine. I sometimes I use gray, but I'm just going to use the off white and staple it, use it like a staple. So I'm going right perpendicular to my fur, stabbing into my established sculpture 
making sure that the staple connects with core wool on each side. That's just gonna ensure that everything is locked in there. You prepared that fiber just like you prepared it for making it, the Just cut it tail. in half, yep, yep. So I'm going to switch to, well, maybe I'll put a little bit of gray just on each side of the eyebrows here, and then I'm going to switch to white. So I'm gonna use a pretty little smaller amount on each side of the eyebrow. And you just, you just have to get your work, kind of have to move it around, put it how you need it to be to, um, to reach these spots. You can go a little, a little bit smaller, yeah. They're getting longer. <laughs> This is like super helpful though, because that's half the time is organizing your organizing your fiber. I usually stab the fiber just a little bit before I put the staple. I don't know why. It helps me make sure I'm in the right spot and get it going. But I'm stabbing this staple quite aggressively. Really, this is the only thing holding this fiber in, so I want it to be very well felted. Okay, and now we're gonna switch to white. Doesn't take a lot to make a little staple. Nope. And I'm gonna come right off of the cheek here. I'm gonna go over this gray piece that I have and then blend out with a little bit of Serafina white. I'll show you what I mean. I'm not gonna go under this. I'm gonna go on top of it. This is just the way mine has turned out. Yours, you know, your fiber might be actually in entirely different places. What kind of car would this kitten like to drive? <laughs> Is this a joke? <laughs> it's a joke. Um, it's timed right now for what you're doing. A Ferrari? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, good Italian kitten. I'm going to try to shape this kitten like this funny little kitten is with the wide set ears and the um, really tapering <laughs> cheeks. So I'm gonna take some of the Serafina white and just with this really small amount, go right off kind of, my, my goal is to blend this together. So go right off the cheek here into the fur and eliminate any lines. So I have a line here because that's how my fur is folded. I'm putting that right on top of it and using the fringe to eliminate that, that line. Okay, and then we need to go, we need to do a white, another white one back towards the ear here and on the top of the head. They have quite a deep round forehead, which we don't totally have yet, so. Oh, 
these are so convenient. <laughs> I could just pick it up with my needle. Perfectly plied noodle staples. If only it were so easy to pick up my alpaca. So this is this entire process. Is just <laughs> putting over. over and over again. Now, in terms of distance, you want them close, but you don't have to. I'm going to like, I'm going to put another one here. They, they can be about an eighth to a quarter of an inch apart. You don't have to stack them super tight. You might run out of fiber. It's just too, it's not needed. Uh, it's twice as much work. You have a little bit of room with how fluffy these are to not be right on top of each other. So for instance, that's about a half an inch. I'm going to put one right there and that's plenty. I don't need to put two in here. And sometimes I finish them and then realize, oh, I, I need, here's a little hole or something. And then you can always add a little bit more. But because we're adding and aggressively felting, make sure you check the look every once in a while because you are kind of forcing more shape and you want to make sure that you're not um, over squishing it in one direction or another. Yeah, losing your shape. If you have someone that you can enlist to do a little fiber rolling. Mm-hmm. Super helpful. That way I can say I made some of the cat too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, you have helped me finish many a project. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go right in a row, but it's always, it's always good to stagger when you can. Right here, I, I only have a certain amount of space, so. This is all just the head so far? Yeah, I'm just getting the head flipped out, and then I'll show how to trim it, and then I'll demonstrate... Um, the body a bit. I feel like I need just a little bit on this cheek. Yeah, and you want symmetry, but like sometimes you need more on one side than another. Like maybe your shape is lopsided or <laughs> so funny. Okay. I'll do a little bit of white out here, and then I'm going to start shaping. Like I said, I have an image here that I'm kind of trying to emulate. Not sure how well I'm going to do, but... 
I have an inspiration. I have a kitten muse. Aw. A kitten muse. muse. <laughs> I planned you were planning it for hours. I, I haven't. I did not. <laughs> I haven't been as punny today. Okay, there's. Wow. Here's the current look. <laughs> we're rocking. <laughs> I feel like. Like this is having this strong line is less smoky kitty, but we're gonna run with it for now. I like having the little eye dents. Okay, with the thinning shears. What I really, what I want to try to get on the head here is just like this rounded forehead that they have. So I'm going to trim with that in mind and I'm going to take out under here and here and then I have to go kind of across here. Does it, would this make you nervous? Yeah. Although this, you could add more or pull off a piece and redo it. Yeah. Not quite working on a wet felting piece and then where it's, that's it. Cutting into it. Well, it's a lot more work to have to remake one if you mess up. So you can see that this takes quite a bit out, you know. I'm trying to take this a little bit short near the eyes because we don't want it to be felted, 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 poof. Like we want a little bit of transitional fur. I'm not sure why this one's smooth and this one's not, but I'll fix it. And then this, I want to try to round. And I like the way his little ears are kind of coming out. So I think I need more. I'm going to do a thing of fiber this way and this way because I need I need more fiber in here basically I don't think today did I show black ears I showed gray ears um, yeah I feel like did you address I mean they're just Black. The black ears, yeah, the black ears are same thing. You want the horizontal piece and the vertical pieces, but it's just black. Mm -hmm. Did you I put a little bit of pink in the black ears? I did put a little bit of pink in the front. Yeah. So then did you talk about if you get the um, lighter color pushed through the back that then, you can... Okay, right. Yeah, maybe I'll show a black, black ear. don't usually change direction of the fur, but it's kind of needed on this, on this one. Meaning if I'm going across, mm. I might angle it, but I don't usually do like 90 degree changes, but that's just what was needed to get in between the ears here. All right, this is good. Oh my gosh, he's so funny. Okay. <laughs> So now it is adding 
a lot of white fur everywhere. And once I When we're putting on fur, I won't stack the next one right next to this. I'll probably put one here and one here. And then you're just going to <laughs> cover the entire body. I'm going to show the chest because that is, you know, a particular area. But once that's finished, it's you're going to cover all of this, I'd say to about here. Like obviously you're not going to go down the the feet, but you you want to get all of this covered. Let me show one that's. Um, I'm going to show the chest. The feet stick out, but down down the sides, all on the back. He's got little white fur all stuck in him. Okay, I'll show the chest real quick. So on the chest, it's just two, it's more, it's more like a, what we call a shingle. So I'm gonna take the same amount that I've been using, let the fringe fall straight down onto the pink belly, stab that in. I'm stabbing the center one third of it, the center third of that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of um, Serafina white on top. Stab that. This way the fringe just blends in with the pink belly. It's still fur like, but it's not sticking straight off. Then you fold the top one third down and felt that down. And I'm not felting the living daylights out of it. I'm letting, I'm letting it still be a little fringy. And then we're going to do that again, um, just under the chin here. You're trying to not stab the chest piece super flat either. Right. It will. It won't. Keep like a little. It won't. It won't totally flatten out. But yes, I'm not aggressively flattening the entire thing. So I'm just going right under the chin and then folding that down. Depending on if your kitten is curled up. I mean, really they have a crease there, so we probably won't need to address it, especially if it's curled up. In other words, I'm not trying to hide that particular crease the way I hide a lot of other creases. It's looking really cute.
floofy kitty. Okie dokie. We have floofed. I might, as I show you how I, he's got noodles stuck to him, um, how I trim this, I might find spots that need more fluff. I do want to, I don't love the way this is super distinct. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of Serafina white and a little bit of the alpaca, blend them together, and let me see here. That's More of a shingle. Work. I don't know if I'm going to shingle it or just run it. Let me see what happens if I just stab it. around the arm to like leaving some of it fuzzy but making it a little bit more indistinct mm -hmm. um, okay I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna reverse needle it I think that's what's gonna that's what's gonna help here Yeah, that looks better. I don't know. I don't know. I have to figure out what I want this kitten to be doing. But until then, um, just a few little details that we're going to address. We're going to trim it. And I sort of reinforced where the feet were going <laughs> definitely needs a haircut. So I'm going to floof them out. It kind of looks a little bit less realistic when it's so long like this. They're just, their hair isn't this long and um, uneven. And then once I do this also, we can see where it needs more, more fluff. So overall, I'm shooting for about you know, like an inch and a half of length and taking away anything, any of these points that are a lot longer than that. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I was trying to think what the longest fur cat is, if it's the Himalayan or... Um, it's like a, something called a ragdoll or... Okay. There's like long-haired breeds for sure. This is a little bit of a bald spot, so I'm going to put another piece of fur here. You're going to find these spots as you groom <laughs> and you might have to like right here. Um, yeah, just fill them in and then you can keep shaping. But it's so much fun and the black is very straightforward. I've been doing, you know, a little bit of white on the chest just, just because it helps show them off a little bit. All black is a little harder to see in terms of a sculpture. Did you say ragamuffin? Oh, ragdoll. I said ragdoll. Ragamuffin is ragamuffin. There is a ragamuffin. <laughs> Milo is a ragamuffin. That's for sure. Let's see if just a piece coming out takes care of this or if it needs. I 
Every type of cat benefits from regular brushing. Wonder how many cats sit and happily get brushed. <laughs> Now, I feel like my kitten needs a little blend from dark to white right here. It's a little, little strong. That gray piece that I put underneath, it's under there, but it got totally covered by white. This is a minimum, a very small amount of fiber. I'm just going to come off the corner of the eye and down, and then I'll reverse it to, to blend it. I like the idea of the little white um, eyelids underneath, so I'm kind of trying to keep those. And then I'll reverse needle that to blend it all together really well. One thing I've had to do on a few kittens is make another muzzle piece. So if uh, they're nice and rounded in their muzzle, so if you didn't quite have enough of that shape, you can make a little, like I feel like it's okay on this side. It's a little lean on this side. So you could make a really simple, thin, folded piece and give them a little bit more, a little bit more upper lip here. Just showing you how to troubleshoot some things. This happened on mine for sure. All right, so that just made this side bigger and darker. So I'm gonna put a really tiny piece on the other side. It's so, you just have to be careful not to build, build, build until you have this gigantic, gigantic cat. Gosh, it's so easy to get this alpaca stuck in everything. It's pretty cute. I am not liking this crazy paw. I like it on that one. Maybe it needs to be, I don't know. Where do you think it needs to go? You fix it. All right. <laughs> I like it on this one for some reason, but he doesn't have his fur yet. Hmm. Does he need a little bit of fur on this part of the paw? Because it would be furry. Mm -hmm. No? I mean, I think it's cute. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what it needs. Maybe, you know where it needs it? It needs it right in here. There's a big bald spot. And, and so it'll poof out around it, and it'll look better. I decree.
Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> just totally waving. Just like, hey. <laughs> Oh boy, this kitten is this kitten is a ragamuffin too. He's a rascal is what he is. Okay, one thing that I see that I would like to do is redefine a little bit of black line around the open eye. So I'm gonna take a really thin piece of black, roll it in my fingers, and just outline the eye. It's kind of important to let the end of the outline end in a corner of the eye because if you try to just go all the way around, it's not going to look quite right. So let each end of your little black strip go to a corner of the eye. And I want a little bit in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, like I said, you can kind of stab away and add um, detail <laughs> for a long time. But this is, this is the project. You can also sculpt um, like sculpt his back by denting the fur in, you know, here and there, like especially at the, at the base of the neck. If you were trying to get a little bit more realism, I feel like this is not a good spot. See, every once in a while you're going to find a, find a bald spot. Poor guy. He's like, ah, oh, this is what my thug cat looks like. Like giant chunks of fur. Really? Missing from him. Yes. <laughs> Well, there's a stray cat that hangs out and they fight. <laughs> the stray cat is like, please adopt me. And <laughs> the big cat is just like, nope, there's not enough room in this house. I'm sure she can't afford to feed you too. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clobber you. And they make the most awful noises. Yeah. Especially in the middle of the night. Okay, kitten, I'm going to work on you another day, I think. <laughs> I could just floof and groom you forever. Oh, he's, I think I might have to, he's, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> hi, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to. He might need a regular eye. <laughs> Okay, everybody, the, the kid that I made for the tutorial <laughs> <laughs> could be uh, spruced up a little bit. <laughs> this one's cute. They're both cute. I just, I, he just needs a little more, just needs a little more attention. Oh my gosh. What else do we need to point out before we close, wrap up? Um, you're good there. I'm good here. That was a lot. I, we did that in one day. Uh, that's pretty great. Yeah. I'm 
catatonic. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> He's cute, I decided. I took the um the yarn from the kit and made a little made him a little toy. Do you need a yarn toy? I I mean, I probably wouldn't play with it. <laughs> you don't play with anything. Uh, well, no, but... You're like a non-toy dog. I, I mean, yeah. I like food, though. You do. I've got to finish this little guy. I think I'm going to make more cats. I'm going to make more kittens. I have one, two, three... One, two, three, four, five, six... And really seven, because these are two halves. And then let me, before we go, I'm just going to talk about the orange tabby real quick, which was my attempt at a tabby. I don't know how, it's not super stripey because the fur is long and it's a little bit like blended. But what I did was I used the tabby fur, which is very orange, and I blended it with the fawn alpaca some with fawn alpaca and some with brown alpaca. So that gave me my two, two stripe colors. You could do that with any of the fur line and alpaca. I would try to include the alpaca because the fur is kind of shiny and um, like more slippery and the alpaca gets a little bit more of that puff, which is what we want for, you know, little, little, baby kittens. So you can totally experiment with other colors other than what comes in the supply pack. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope that you will make some kittens. I'm usually blown away because people, you know, use the tutorial and then take it to <laughs> another level, which is awesome. I love that. Um, we have a Facebook group called Serafina Felting Fanfare. You can join us there if you're not already a member. And uh, that's going to be loaded with cute fuzzy kittens. Loaded with kittens. I can't wait. But the supply pack is perfect. I've made um, several kittens from two supply packs now. And I'm very happy with the, the approach and the fiber. Um, so it is a good way to go if you're looking for ease or for a gift. For your all the people that you're recruiting to join you in needle felting, which I know is happening. So thank you so much, and I can't wait to see your kittens.